the transportation problem, the linear programming formulation of. Um, before we actually, we, we actually formulate it, it's worth thinking about what the actual transportation problem is doing and what these numbers represent, because people do get confused. And some of you did get confused in the test about what these numbers are. This number, what are, the, what are these numbers here? I know if it was a transportation problem, what are those numbers that are inside? They're actual costs. So these are costs. And when you were doing your northwest corner method thing, you were putting numbers in here. We're not doing a northwest corner method now because we're, we're actually formulating the problem. But we are, um, the numbers we put in here are not costs, are they? They're, when we, they're actual units transported. So we need to be very clear what numbers, uh, rep what the numbers represent. Um, okay, so to have a, to formulate something as a linear programming problem, we need decision variables. Okay, so... That's what we're changing, what we're deciding here. So, the decision variables are, are numbers of units being transported. Now, I'm going to label these in such a way here. So, X, we call that XAP, and this is XVP, and so on. And this one would be XAQ. So now, we don't really want to be listing all those. You could do, um, and that would be defining your problem, but then you'd have to, do, you'd have to repeat it for all, all 12 of the units in the cell. It's a little bit unpure un mathematical, because of course you could, have, you could have lots of these things. You could have 30 or 30, 300 of these things. So we need to have some way, in a pure mathematical way, of labelling them. So what we do is we say... Um, we, we say that let x, y, j, now there's no context in this question, so we have to talk about units of being transported from one place to the other. So uh, b, the number of units transported from supply point, I'm using the word supply point because I've no idea if these are warehouses, depots or whatever because there's no context, but if the question was about washing machines being transported from warehouses to depots or depots, then you use the context that actually is in that question. Um, let X, I, J be the number of units transported from supply point I to demand point J. Where I is a member of one of these, A, B, C, D. You do need to list them all. And J is a member of these, P, Q, and R. Okay, um, I think that's our decision variables sorted. Okay, we can either go for the objective function now or the constraints. Let's do the constraints first. I prefer to use the sigma notation for the constraints because it means you have to write a little bit less. Okay, so the constraint, we've got supply constraints here, so we've got a constraint there. Let's you write it in uh, the sigma way. Notice that the A bit hasn't changed. Okay, so we can write that as sigma x, a being fixed, j of j. And we've, because we've already defined what j is, pqr, 
we know what J is, so we don't have to write P, J is member of PQR there. We've done that. So J um, equals to 123. Now sometimes you'll see it write these as inequalities. So you, uh, some people write them as inequalities because if you're going to actually program it, you would find that you'd put an inequality like that. I'm going to go for equality here. Sometimes they will tell you. So if they tell you write as an inequality, you've got to. If they say write them as equalities, then you've got to do that too. So, does anyone want to be brave enough to give me the this this one here? XBJ. So it's XBJ. Is um, J equals to, and the number was 143, and then we've got sigma XCJ equals to 84, do write the J in there, um, and then sigma XDJ equals to 150. Is that all our constraints so far? <coughs> oh, they, we've certainly got the non-negativity, you've got to be careful with that, but there's actually a whole load here as well, isn't there? There's three constraints which are our demand constraints. So this time we note that it's the second number that say, stays fixed of our suffix. So it'll be sigma i x i p equals to 200 and sigma i for this one here um, and the label there is q x i q equals to this number and finally sigma and this one here and it was pqr i think yeah pqr so the r stays fixed x i r equals to 200 with uh, summing over R, and yes, the non-negativity constraint. Do not forget that, <laughs> otherwise we haven't fully. And the, object, the beauty of this IJ notation thing is that we don't have to literally list them all out and say they've all got to be greater than zero, otherwise we'd have to list all 12 of them. And it all, come, it's, it all comes because of a combination of our kind of strict, pure mathematical de definition here, and we've referred back to that. Okay, we haven't done the objective function yet. Okay, let me just uh, minimise that so to make a bit more space so that we can see everything we've done. Okay, so we are trying to minimise or maximise. I know some of us get a bit mixed up with that. So we're trying to minimise or minimise or maximise. We're minimising, aren't we? So we're trying to minimise, so our objective function Okay, so Something's gone wrong So, okay Our objective function is to minimise, use the word cost, and then put a C in for it as well, just to guarantee. Now we've got our numbers, which were the costs that we had earlier on here, the 17, the 24, the 19, and so on. But now we will have to list them all out. So it's going to be a long expression, and we need to take care with it. It will get checked carefully. So we would say 17... And that's XAP. 
plus 15 XBP plus 19 XCP plus 20 XDP okay plus might be worth writing them in a line like this um, 24 and that would be X A Q plus 21 X EQ plus twenty two X CQ plus it is not acceptable to do dot 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 here. You have to write them all out. Okay. Now so we've got twenty two CDQ and then twenty seven. And 27 would be X DQ. And I'm running out of space again, so I'll just make myself some more space. Here's that I can't find myself more space, which is Oh, no, yeah. Okay. Nice one. Okay, so finally, we can look for the. We're we're looking for the final numbers associated with that. So that's plus nineteen. Plus nineteen. X. A. R. Plus. 25 X B R plus 18 X C R plus 16 X D R and notice because of the way it's been lined up, you've got to be very careful that you don't, that because of the way I've lined it up here in three rows, it just makes it, we're looking at rows, well, I can look down the rows and I can see I've got a C everywhere there and I can see I've got a D everywhere here. So if you try and, and it will also be nice for the market to see that because they will, it will then save them a bit of time which will make them very happy with you too. Okay, um, and it'll be easier to check because they will get checked very carefully. Okay.